All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Cody Schneider, who is in Denver, Colorado. How are you doing, Cody? I'm doing well, John. How are you doing today? Yeah, doing great. And Cody is an entrepreneur and digital marketer uh, based in Denver, Colorado. And for over a decade, he's helped grow multiple software startups focused on marketing automation and content production tools. His background includes experience of both agencies and hyper growth startups. Cody shares proven efficiency. Uh, uh, Cody is now the founder of Draft Horse, an AI content platform that reached 10K MMR in its first month based pure on virality. And by the way, anybody who's tried to build a, a, a business and get MM, you know, get a M, MM or whatever, it's a, it, it's a tough thing to do. So that's impressive. It's the hardest thing to yeah. do. <laughs> I mean, we were, we were honestly shocked with that product that it grew that fast. Um, it, it went viral on Twitter is really what it came down to. We did some like product demos and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we yeah. can go into all the details, but it started out as an internal tool. I was talking about it in public and people were like, hey, I want that more than the thing that you're building currently. <laughs> and uh, so we ended up spinning it out of another company. And yeah, it was it was kind of a wild. Like basically the servers were on fire. Everything was breaking. It got, you know, a classic kind of viral moment. Mm -hmm. And now it's in a stable place and it's kind of consistent growth. But it was definitely one of those things where you're like, how am I going <laughs> to? sustain this you know That's for... <laughs> well a fantastic problem to have uh, so we're going to talk about the idea of building businesses through ai content at scale and discussing how tools like draft horse empowered organic marketing and community growth um so um uh, cody let's let's get straight into it and give us some idea about number one when you when when AI started to become accessible in those tools, like what, what, what did, what made you think, okay, here is an opportunity to use AI and to use AI content at scale in order to, to build a real business. Yeah, it's a great question. So it really timeline wise, what we saw is that in July of 2022, things really started to become like mm -hmm. usable. So from a marketing perspective, the AI at that point was like good enough that I could actually like publish it and mm -hmm. use it in public without, uh, you know, with it making impact for the business. So everybody I knew that was in S or Silicon Valley, and I, I was living out in the Bay Area mm -hmm. at the time, um, we were basically all experimenting yep. with this in some way. And so uh, what we really found it to be super um, like good at is kind of two things, repurposing content and also um, just like creating content in bulk at scale. So uh, Draft Horse is really on that. I, I think about that as a spectrum. Like I'm like uh, when I'm repurposing content, what I'm doing is I'm taking like source material as an example, like this mm -hmm. podcast, and I'm turning that into either like blog posts or Twitter threads or LinkedIn posts, et cetera. In contrast, um, what Draft Horse is doing is what it's really, uh, it's taking the general knowledge of the AI and then we're building a workflow on top of that to pr produce some type of output. So um, like to think about this, like what I'm basically trying to do, like on when I'm producing content at scale is figure out some type of, like this arbitrage right. exists right now and it won't exist mm -hmm. for a long time um, because of this. Like specifically it's focused on the seo piece like that's what draft horse is doing so like draft horse in its uh, core it, it writes uh, hundreds of seo optimized articles and minutes um so basically you give it a list of target keyword phrases and it goes and it writes a blog right. post for each of those and then i can publish it directly to that my wordpress mm -hmm. blog or whatever i use for my cms hosting um so that's like what really i think I, I i'm always trying to communicate to people when we think about ai content is like what are the content production workflows that your team is doing currently and how do you abstract those away like as much of that kind of like raw lift as possible so that they're focused on the, yeah. the beginning and end right so basically giving the ai the the mm -hmm. task that it's supposed to accomplish and then doing that last five percent of like okay now we're going to just do the final touches on this content making sure that it's, uh, you know, call to actions are there, et cetera, to actually provide uh, impact to my business. So, yeah, yeah. no, no, and, and absolutely. That's, that's, um, and that's fascinating. And I, I think, uh, as you said, I mean, this starts to solve that age old problem because the thing about content was always 
the the magic sauce was create once, use multiple, use it multiple times exactly. in different formats and all of that, which is easier said than done in the past because you know you needed to do this manually pretty much if you wanted to take say an article and then have a, a you know tweets out of it or have a have, make it into a presentation whatever it is you had to do it manually. I had an army yeah. of team members. Like, so, I mean, at the last company I was at, as an example, like we had, I think it was 15 team members that were all working on these different, like repurposing content, making content, you know, that was like specific for SEO. So that commodity content. So like now say I'm a startup, right? Rather than having to mm -hmm. hire 15 people and pay all those salaries, I can do a combination of all of these AI tools together. I get two or three good people that are 10x marketers, and I like I, I empower them with these AI tools, and suddenly they're 100x marketers, right? So I have these three people working like they're a hundred, you know, 300 people because they have all of these, you know, this firepower mm -hmm. behind them. And that's like again when I'm talking to like other founder friends that are building these companies, and they're like, okay, cool, we got our you know, cold emails locked in and we've got kind of our initial customers. Now we're trying to figure out like, how do we do content so that we can build brand, which is like one of the hardest things for early stage companies to do is how do I, you know, get my entire target audience to know first off mm -hmm. that I exist <laughs> and then second off, be able to like, trust me so that I can sell them. And content is the vehicle for that. But I'm basically just saying, Hey, you know, find that one person that's super good and then put these things, you know, give them access to these tools so that they can then go and build these processes mm -hmm. out to, create content escape. And like, I, I mean, I'm seeing some of these startups, like we just, <laughs> I talked to a, a client uh, two weeks ago and they published like 10,000 articles that are all related to like SMS and email marketing. Cause they're mm -hmm. a tool that's built for that. And like, that's an example of this. So they built this, you know, it's basically an individual who found all these target keywords. They write all this content. They then have an offshore team come in and like add photos and add call to actions in specific places, maybe do the internal linking, all of that manual work. But you're, you can hire that unskilled labor to basically yeah. fill in those gaps and the AI, which is like, you know, the challenge, like if I want to really the, how I, I keep talking about it to people is like, if I wanted to go write a thousand articles, uh, say this was like 18 yeah. months ago, I would pay at least $50 an article. We'll mm -hmm. call it a hundred dollars an article for a good article. So that's going to cost me a hundred yeah. grand, yeah. right. To write all of that content. Now I can go and write a thousand articles for 50 cents a piece. That's going to cost me $500. If one signup happens, especially if yeah. I have a B2B or enterprise product, like I just mm -hmm. paid for my whole, you know, yeah. my, that whole, that whole campaign. Mm -hmm. So of course I'm going to do this. And that's kind of this moment in this opportunity that exists right now when these teams are employing these AI yeah. tools. So. Yeah. One of the challenges too, is that, uh, you know, it's one thing producing content, right. And there's, you know, a lot of people producing content. It's another producing good content. It's another thing producing targeted content and the distribution. I mean, that's the big, that's the big issue as you, uh, uh, you know, as you pointed out, because it's, you can have great content, but if nobody ever reads it, I, I say that years ago when some podcasts, I said, listen, if everybody is producing content, who's reading it? <laughs> We're all in producing. 100%. So, uh, I mean, you're competing for attention, right? And you're also competing against yeah. Netflix and all the other podcasts that are, you know, any entertainment uh, that exists. It's a little bit different again, when you're in the mm -hmm. B2B space, like you have a more of an audience that's trying to upskill mm -hmm. themselves and have more knowledge about the industry that they're in. So it's probably like typically less mm -hmm. competitive. Um, but I think the, the, like to your point with the distribution side, like I, so I worked in a, a B2B yeah. agencies for forever. And like we'd, we'd uh, service, like I call them torture 500 companies, but fortune 500 mm -hmm. companies. Um, and a lot of what we found with these organizations is that their teams were just like, they, they almost had, they, they couldn't get <laughs> their head wrapped around that, like just the process of making content was more impactful than um, like, like it didn't, what was more impactful for the business was like, if somebody saw yeah. the thing, right? So if they didn't have some vehicle, like just producing yeah. it and putting it out in public does mm -hmm. nothing yeah. for the brand, right? And so it's like, okay, they were like, yeah, we want to have a LinkedIn strategy. And it's like, okay, well, why? And they don't have an answer. And then it's like, okay, well, like, do, do, do you want to invest in growing followers there? Cause like, this is going to sure. take time yep. and resources to do that. They're mm -hmm. like, no. And then they just would go about doing busy work, which is, you know, the busy work of making content that makes no impact to the business. And so it's, it's two sides of the same coin, right? It's like having some way to get that distribution 
and building that thing that provides value to that cons like customer and which then you know creates inbound leads etc yeah business. and and the other and and as we said the other part of it too is i mean particularly nowadays is people consume information in very different ways uh you know so some people still like to read some people want to watch videos some people want to listen you know some people just want to have graphical things to look at so there's if you're going to if you're going to reach the widest audience then you have to you have to have your content in all the in multiple formats 100 percent, and it's like you want to meet them mm -hmm. where they are right um I, I it's funny i'm seeing more and more b2b companies like go on tiktok <laughs> <laughs> and it's largely because it's like oh that audience is there and it looks like they want to consume this content even if it's a mm -hmm. small amount but i, I you know to, if i what I, I tell every person that's like i'm trying to build a content engine for my my company like what do i do like the easiest thing that you can do and what i've done for like previous startups um, in the past is you, be, you make long form pieces of content. So whether that be a mm -hmm. podcast, whether that be webinars, you do it on a weekly basis or whatever cadence that your team can afford. You then take that long form piece of content and you chop it up into all the different, you know, ch like uh, forms of content for each individual channel. So if you're saying, hey, my audience is mm -hmm. on Twitter, you know, YouTube shorts and it's on LinkedIn. Okay, well, I'm going to take that long form piece of content and I'm going to make, I'm going to repurpose that into all these bite sized pieces for each of those channels. And when you have that long form, a lot of the times there's multiple yeah. ideas that exist within that piece of content, right? So, like, this is where the AI is super good mm -hmm. at this and really powerful. So, I can say, okay, cool, here's this transcript of a podcast episode. What are the five key takeaways, you know, related to XYZ topic? We'll say uh, business, right? Mm -hmm. Or market or digital marketing that's mentioned in this episode. Okay, now let's go write five different uh, LinkedIn posts based off of those right. key takeaways. We're gonna write 30 tweets based off of those five. So five, you're, sorry, we'll say, uh, you know, 25 mm -hmm. tweets based off of those five. So it's five tweets per idea. And then I'm also going to go and then make uh, YouTube shorts that pull out those core ideas or the, the moments where that aha moment happens and then distribute it across that channel. And right there, I just did an hour yeah. of work, like Sam, yeah. a founder, I did an hour of work, but what that turns into is I have a whole week of content yeah. done. So the mental energy that's expended though, is like, I'm only thinking about it for that one to two hours that I'm, I'm, I'm focusing mm -hmm. on that long form. And then I, I build this team and really now I build this AI mm -hmm. infrastructure behind me that's doing all that post-production yeah. process. So. And the and the uh, changes like Google, the algorithm changes that are coming up. And uh, I mean, a lot of it's going to be where they're looking for deeper content now, you know, where they're going to have, you know, um, more search uh, SEO based on natural language, just like AI. So how do you how do you make how do you make sure that, uh, you know, what you're doing is staying up? to speed with how the algorithms are, 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 are operating? That's a great question. Um, so just what we started doing as soon as we built this technology is we were just like, let's just publish like a hundred websites <laughs> and see what happens. So across those, we've seen an array of things happen. So I, I own a bunch of blogs mm -hmm. as well. Like again, been in this space yeah. for forever. So just a bunch of media has been built over time. Um, I've seen with the most recent update, I've seen blogs that are 100% human written absolutely get mm -hmm. crushed, like down, you know, 70% right. in total organic traffic. And I've seen entirely AI generated blogs just absolutely skyrocket. So I don't know if there's like, like people are like, I get asked this really often, like, is, like can Google identify like content that's written by AI? I don't think so. And largely that's just based on the mm -hmm. data that I'm seeing. So that's kind of number one. And then number two, the other way that you can combat this, like if you're trying to create thought leadership content, that's original content. Like if I, like the thing that we're starting to do yep. more and more now is I go and I talk to industry mm -hmm. experts. So say I'm trying to write a piece of content about like content or AI uh, yeah, content yeah. marketing, right? I would go and I would talk to industry experts about AI content marketing. Say I interview five of them for 20 to 30 minutes, right? I then take those transcripts. This is now my mm -hmm. source document. And I say, okay, I'm going to like build me an article outline uh, based, I tell the AI this, based on this source information that's about the target keyword phrase, AI content right. marketing. So it's going to build me that outline. And then I go have it and I write that, uh, write that content based on that outline. And that's how I can create, I mean, in it, I, you know, there's all these other sure. things you can do, right? It's like right in first person, like right in this tone of voice, like, you're talking from the perspective of this individual, like provide their LinkedIn post so that it has context of like who's actually mm -hmm. writing it. 
And what that can do is create this content that like nobody else has, that the AI is using its general knowledge to kind of like summarize and organize for you. And this is this way to scale this up where it's like, you're not just using the general knowledge of the LLM. Mm -hmm. So what it like understands and knows like kind of that average yeah. of the bell curve, what you're doing is using those industry experts ideas and translating them into your own using AI to be the vehicle in the process. Yeah. And I think that's the point though, that is, is where the differentiation comes in is when you are using original content, when you are putting some effort in at the beginning and then allowing AI to do what AI does best is, as you said, is to target it, is to improve it, is to uh, distribute, distribute it. Uh, because I think, I think it'll be the same thing again. It's like, if, if people just, you know, use sim use tools to make it easy to just to produce a load of content. It'll be like back in the day, you just hired a bunch of people to write a load of content. There needs to be thought into that content strategy first. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, it, 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 with all marketing, mm -hmm. it's like, what is the goal, yeah. and then I work back from there, right? I, I see so often that, like, again, people start out <laughs> and like, okay, we can do all these things. Like a great example is like channels to be on. Um, I, again, when I was doing consulting, like what I would go tell people is like, the first question I'd ask is like, where do you, where do your, where does your target audience spend mm -hmm. time online? And, you know, nine times out of 10, they didn't have a yep. good answer. And so the first thing we would do is be like, okay, cool. Like, where are the channels that actually are? Like, why are you, you know, an example would be like, why are you doing Pinterest or tick or Twitter if yep. nobody's there? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so starting from, okay, my goal is to get a sign up for my software. Where, like, how do I work back from that? Where is my audience? Okay, my audience is in these locations. All right, we need to make, at, like, for Google ads, we can just turn those on. For Facebook ads, we can just turn those on. But say we need to do uh, YouTube organic and we need to do, you know, we'll say uh, uh, Twitter organic. Okay, well, now I need to make content marketing processes that I'm basically creating content for those channels every day so that I'm showing mm -hmm. up in front of those people every day for, you know, the rest of the company's <laughs> existence. And that's, that's the whole marketing process. AI is just fitting into the things that we were doing previously. We're just trying to like hand those things off to them as much as we can. Yeah. So. And, and there's a, so there's, you know, people are, people are all worried about, you know, AI is going to take over everything and all of this, but I think that especially what you outlined there, I think, it, and, and this is my argument always is, that it allows us to focus on high value activities, right? And the more intelligent 100%. you are in the use of the AI tools, the better the result would be. But uh, I, I think I think people who are afraid of it, like replacing everything, I think sure it'll it'll replace some, uh, you know, it'll replace some of the routine road tasks, and it may uh, it may replace some of maybe lower skilled, but I think it gives you an opportunity to upskill yourself to be able to leverage this and to make yourself actually a more valuable uh, resource. 100%. I mean, I think there's two ways to look at it, right? Like if I'm a business owner, mm -hmm. like I can look at it as either I, you know, say I have a team yep. of 20, like I can cut that team down to five people and they do, you know, two X more work. Or I can say, okay, here's my 20 people. We're now going to do hundred X the amount of work because we're using mm -hmm. these AI tools. So that's at the business level, at the individual level, like this is the biggest, the greatest opportunity for like entry level <laughs> employees to basically make themselves incredibly valuable to their mm -hmm. employer and get a ton of leverage within an organization. Like I'm watching junior developers like ship more code yeah. <laughs> than, you know, their seniors. I'm watching junior marketers ship more marketing material than their seniors. And that's largely just because it, they're just figuring out how do I use this tool within my workflows, mm -hmm. right? So again, it, it, I come from tech, so we always would talk about like, you're looking for 10X people when you're starting early stage companies. Like if you own a business right now, AI, when the tools are used appropriately, and there's, you know, of course there's a North mm -hmm. Star, like I have this goal I'm trying to accomplish, but when they're used effectively, you can make <laughs> these teams, like especially too, if they're not, like a great example is like, say I hire an offshore team member that's in the yep. Philippines. Their English isn't awesome. Well, I can have them, like I can build a document that's like, okay, when people ask these types of questions, this is how the product works, et cetera. They can query against that and say they're doing customer service and be like, okay, I got this question. How should I answer it? It brings mm -hmm. that back and it writes it in better English. And then they just make sure that this is like, okay, this is the right thing that we're trying to communicate to the customer, right? So you can augment these, these, these entry-level employees in a way that makes them yeah. more powerful. 
And then that arbitrage, that global arbitrage that used to be hard to manage, it becomes easier because yeah. of that. And again, just more things I'm seeing in these startups where it's like they're hiring salespeople that are, again, in the Philippines. That's like a traditionally a very like mm. intense role from a communication mm -hmm, mm -hmm. standpoint. But because AI is involved in that process, these individuals, it feels extremely natural. It feels, you know, like it's coming from, say you're selling the US or UK, it's coming from that location, that geography. Yeah, so. no, and, and, and I agree. And I agree with the point. I think they, uh, there's a lot of folks coming in now that uh, are, op are embracing the AI tools, are researching them. And... Uh, you know they're going to make a big impact in in organizations and there are people in organizations who who maybe are shying away or trying to sort of hold on to their fiefdoms etc rather than embracing this they are going to you're going to do themselves out of a job if they're not careful absolutely i i, I think you know again with all change it's mm -hmm. scary especially when you're you know working in an organization and you don't own it um but i, I think it looks like this is an inevitability yeah. <laughs> like across the board and so if I was in that person's shoes, I would be like, okay, cool. Like, how do I start to build these processes yeah. internally and own that space, like build out my own, my new little fee, mm -hmm. right? So that I become indispensable. Like, if, and, and, and we're seeing these roles start to pop up. They're called like, you know, uh, director of yeah, automation yeah, yeah. or something like that, right? So it's like, how are they chaining together Zapier and AI tools and spreadsheets and all of these things to create these automated workflows? Like you, like, again, if I was 22 and working at some big company, that is what I would go do right. right now is I'd figure out how to do that because to the employer, they're going to look at this and be like, okay, this person just created, you know, a million five in value and we're paying them whatever, 120 yeah. a year. I'll, I'll, I'll never <laughs> let go of them because all they do is they go and they look at the processes and they're like, okay, what can I automate? What can I yeah. offshore? And then they come back to me with like, okay, this is how much money I just saved you. Of course I want them. They'll never, I'll never get rid of them. I'll try, I'll keep them as long as I yeah, can. No, I, I, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, well, listen, Cody, this has been fascinating. Thank you for sharing all of Cody's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and uh, what's it, uh, Draft and your company. Yeah, and about yeah, Draft Force. Yeah, so... So Draft Horse, again, is uh, it's an AI tool that helps you write hundreds of articles uh, in minutes. You basically, give it a list of target keyword phrases related to your business. So say, as an example, you do SMS mm -hmm. marketing or something like that. You could do like SMS marketing for hotels, SMS marketing for doctors, SM et cetera. And it's going to write an article about each of those. You can then take that and directly publish it to your website. So that's, again, on the we're calling that commodity yeah. content. So that business is there. And then we what we actually spun Draft Horse out of is this company called Swell AI. Swell AI is content repurposing. Mm -hmm. So I give it source yep. material and then I'm like, okay, cool. Go write an article or go make clips, mm -hmm. for, you know, of the video, et cetera. And that's what it goes and does. So, yeah. And then you can find me on all social. I'm, I'm uh, mainly on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn is kind of my, my two places that it, you, you can see me. On yeah, that's stuff. fantastic. Uh, I encourage you to go check it out. You need to get on the, uh, you need to get on the vanguard of all of this. So I encourage you to go uh, check out Draft Horse, check out Cody's work. Uh, so thanks again, Cody, for today. Thank you for watching and listening. And you know, I'll see you all again soon.